Evidently a big fan not only of Chinese authoritarianism, but also of the Cuban gun grabbing committed by his spirit animal, Fidel Castro. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in 2020 had his bureaucracy ban the sale of what he and his leftist allies called assault-style rifles, those seeming to be anything the politicians think look really scary. At that time, the actual ownership of said scary firearms in Canada was, they said, going to be allowed for two years. But their magnanimous grandfather clause has expired. And wait till you see what Trudeau is set to do. Hi, everyone. I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. Indeed, the grandfather clause period is over. So after some 2021 budgetary wrangling from, get this, Trudeau's firearms buyback secretariat, the final government offers in this collectivist Canadian gun theft ceremony have been released. As Roberto Wacaro Cruz reports for the Post Millennial, owners of the satanic looking AR-15 will get 1,337 Canadian bucks worth about 1,045 US Federal Reserve wink wink notes. And that's just one of the 1,500 kinds of firearms the Canadian government is demanding that people turn over to be bought back at whatever monetary compensation the government says it will hand its victims. Quote, more expensive models include the Swiss Arms SG550, which can be traded in for $6,209. Canadian, how sweet. And if folks are upset that the Canadian government is again acting like the gangland organization that it is, well, they can object until the end of August. And uh, <laughs> they can kind of protest. They can't really object to being robbed. They can only object to the cash amount that the government says it will sprinkle on the wounds after it attacks them. Proposed compensation amounts are still open for input from gun owners and industry experts until August 29th, reports the Canadian press. Because evidently crushing the civil liberties of Canadians with lockdowns, bank freezes, travel blockades, jab mandates, and even literally trampling peaceful protesters doesn't do enough honor to tyrants of the past. Now, just as they did in Australia and the UK, where both nations saw subsequent increases in their violent crime rates, even as gun ownership in the US skyrocketed and violent crime decreased, and you can see my piece from February 2018 for details on all of that information. Many of the Canadian politicians and bureaucrats who clearly despise individual free will and the God-given right to self-defense want to mandate that gun owners turn in their property. Or else, of course, armed agents of the Canadian government will attack them. So much for ending gun violence, eh, Justin? And the government instituting this euphemistically labeled buyback program. Uh, since when was a mob hit a program, by the way? The government has, of course, also claimed the power to commit another wrong. That being its requirement that taxpayers foot the increasingly high bill for this type of thing. But this isn't surprising since the Canadian government already performed a similar shadow dance at taxpayer expense in the 1990s. The program wasn't a buyback, but it cost taxpayers a lot of money and the results of the gun control plan were, as expected, disastrous. In the early 1990s, the Canadian government embarked on a vast, mandatory and expensive gun registration and licensing crusade. Ten years later, in a study conducted for the Libertarian Fraser Institute of Canada, Gary A. Mauser reported this, quote, The contrast between the criminal violence rates in the United States and in Canada is dramatic. Over the past decade, the rate of violent crime in Canada has increased, while in the United States, the violent crime rate has plummeted. 
The Canadian experiment with firearm regulation is moving to farce. The effort to register all firearms, which was originally claimed to cost only $2 million, has now been estimated by the Auditor General to top $1 billion. The final costs are unknown, but if the costs of enforcement are included, the total could easily reach three billion dollars. Folks, that report was released in 2003, and the Canadian government has not only continued to rip off victims of its status hegemony since that time, it's increased the burdens, not only on peaceful gun owners, manufacturers, and sellers, but on taxpayers who've been forced to pay for this whole system. All of it while directing government tax-funded guns and pointing them at the peaceful victims. It's not surprising then that Justin Trudeau so gleefully admires authoritarian China. Hmm. Unbelievable. Haven't they learned their lessons from history? Or maybe they have learned the lessons and they just admire power a lot more than ethics. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you in the comments section on YouTube and at Rumble where they don't censor us. We'll see you at Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, and at Facebook where the MRC TV page is rocking. See you in the comments section there. Also, please visit mrctv.org, the main site, mrctv.org. Find out what the team is doing. And when you go there, please think about buying some MRC swag at the MRC store, the 35th year of the Media Research Center. It's delightful to be part of this great circle of friends. MRC, great people. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.